So far this semester, we've talked about solid objects, so whether we were treating them as a single particle or as some extended object, it was still solid. Of course, fluids aren't solid. One of the complications that we have to deal with with fluids is that the mass of a fluid can often be difficult to measure. And so what that does is it tends to drive us toward thinking with fluids in terms of densities. So what I see here with this equation it tells me that m the mass is equal to, this is the lowercase Greek rho, we're using that to talk about density, times capital V here is the volume. It is often much, much easier to measure the volume of a fluid. And then if we know the density, that gives us a way to figure out how much mass we have. If our fluid happens to be homogeneous, so for any homogeneous substance, the density is equal to mass divided by volume. So it's the total mass of your substance divided by the total volume of your substance. If I have an inhomogeneous substance, well, I can still use the same relationship. It's just, again, I need to use it over tiny differential elements rather than over the entire chunk of substance that I have. And so what I can do is I can use my equation that says that rho equals dm over dv and then rearrange the terms and integrate both sides. And so what I'm left with is, oh, the total mass has got to be equal to an integral of the density times my tiny little volume elements. And so the density can depend on position. If, if your substance is not homogeneous, it will. But this gives me a way to use that density to calculate what the total mass is. Units of density, again, I'm sure you've seen these before, but we just want to make sure that it's clear that in SI, those units are kilogram per cubic meter. You've seen density in other classes, most likely chemistry, where you may have used a different unit, right? Within uh, the CGS uh, metric units that are often used in chemistry, this is often grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, you may see things in terms of liters, because again, that's another volume that, that often is easy to come by. Uh, in terms of measuring things for, for chemistry problems. But in SI, density units, kilogram per cubic meter. The other new concept that we want to introduce is pressure. And so where does pressure come from? Well, the idea behind pressure is, let's say you have a surface that's now sitting in your fluid. Because it's sitting in the fluid, there are going to be forces that push on both sides of that surface. The pressure is related to how much those forces act on the surface and then what the area of the surface is. So the pressure is equal to, this is F perpendicular. So it's the magnitude of the, of the force that's exerted on the surface that's perpendicular to the surface divided by the area of the surface. Notice that even though we're talking about forces and forces are obviously vectors, pressure itself is a scalar. And so I'm simply in, interested in the magnitude of the force that's perpendicular to the surface. So I just want that component. Again, the units of pressure, that's going to be units of force divided by units of area. So units of force are Newton, units of area is meters squared. So Newton per square meter is one way to talk about the units of pressure. We give it its own name in the SI system, and so these are Pascals. So we'll use PA capital P, lowercase a, to mean pascals, which is our SI unit of pressure. Now the pressure you're probably most familiar with, and it's certainly the one that you sort of spend the most time in, is atmospheric pressure. And so by definition, atmospheric pressure is another way of saying one atmosphere. It's basically what is the air pressure when you're roughly at sea level on the surface of the Earth. There are multiple other pressure units that we could report atmospheric pressure in, right? So one atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, happens to be equal to 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals. It's also 14.7 pounds per square inch. It's 1.013 bar. It's 760 torricellis, which is another way of saying millimeters of mercury. All of these are different pressure units. Um, many of them are historical, right? This is the unit we're going to need most often when working problems in the SI unit system. And so 
part of what I want to emphasize with this slide is if you have something whose pressure, if you have a fluid that's at atmospheric pressure, but you plug in one atmosphere rather than a little over 101,000 pascals, obviously that difference in number is going to change things in your answer. So make sure that you get the pascal number plugged in when you're working problems in the SI metric system. So if we want to think about sort of what's causing atmospheric pressure, again, we can think about some, some little piece of area here on the surface of our fluid. And so we know that there will be a force due to atmospheric pressure that's pushing down on that surface. The question becomes, what generates that force? So this force due to atmospheric pressure, where does that come from? And so if we sort of blow up this little chunk of surface that we've got, well, obviously there are air molecules that are running around. And so these air particles, they're running around in all directions. They're randomly oriented, but some of them, the ones that you see here towards the bottom that have uh, their paths are denoted in yellow as opposed to the rest where they're denoted in blue, some of them are bouncing off the surface of the fluid. And so it's the fact that as they bounce off, there's clearly a change in momentum of the particle as it bounces off the surface. That change in momentum is related to an average force. That average force from Newton's third law, I know that the average force exerted by the surface on the particle has to be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction to the average force that the particle exerts on the surface. And that's where this force due to atmospheric pressure comes from. It's basically the particles of the air at atmospheric pressure as they bounce off some surface that generates the force that's caused, that's caused by atmospheric pressure.